Welcome to this week's Tuesday Tip. Last Friday, HUD released two new documents, and they are the multifamily Q&A for COVID-19 and also a Q&A on the CDC order to temporarily halt evictions. You can find both of these documents on our website at navigatehousing.com. Now, there are several changes or updates in these documents, but there are two in particular that we wanted to bring to your attention because they're going to change the way that you process medical expenses. So first, we'll take a look at uh, question 16 on page 26, and it asks, are the cost of personal protective equipment, PPE, considered an allowable medical expense for residents? And HUD answers this with a yes. HUD says that items intended to reduce the risk of transmitting illness or preventing illness, including that PPE, can be an eligible medical expense. So this includes items like face coverings, goggles, gloves, things of that nature. Now the items are eligible if the resident bought them on or after March 27, 2020, and only if a national, state, or local COVID-19 emergency was in effect. So keep that in mind. HUD also adds an important note here saying that eligible families can include these medical expenses, include these items as medical expenses, retroactively going back to March 27, 2020, and calculate TTP accordingly. Now, HUD says that you don't have to do an IR. All you need to do is correct the certification this change will affect. And you can refer to Handbook 4350.3, Paragraph 5-10.D, for guidance on the treatment of the medical expenses that you can allow, and also subparagraph six for guidance on one-time non-recurring medical expenses. Next, we want to take a look at emergency funds, and this comes from question 27 on page 29, and it's a two-fold question. The first part of it asks, what emergency funds can owners and agents access for outbreak preparedness and response, including things like extra supplies, additional administrative hours, staff overtime, hosting a vaccination clinic at the property? And the second part of that question, what kind of approval do housing providers need from HUD to access these funds? So HUD says that you can use property operating accounts for all what they call quote, reasonable and necessary COVID-19 related preparedness and response action. So that includes the things that we've been talking about, supplies, staff hours, PPE, hosting a vaccination site at the property. And if you do decide that you want to host a clinic within your community, you can use these funds to cover the cost of operating that clinic, like setting up a tent, putting up barriers. You can also use the funds to um, pay for costs related to helping your residents get to and from the vaccination site. All of the things listed on your screen now, you do not need prior HUD approval to access your operating account funds. However, HUD is very specific in the document about saying what you cannot use the funds to pay for. That includes you can't use the funds to purchase vaccines. As we know, the federal government is paying for all of that. You can't use the property operating account to hire medical staff, and you also can't use it to pay for other direct medical expenses. So, of course, there will be times when you will need prior approval, and HUD lists them out. For instance, let's say you require an advance, and uh, you need to talk to HUD first, especially if you expect repayment before the distribution of annual or semi-annual surplus cash. You will need to be pre-approved if your property has reserve for replacement accounts and residual receipt accounts. You can refer to Handbook 4350.1, Chapter 4 for reserve for replacement and also Chapter 25 for residual receipts. Now, these this is for eligible items only. So eligible items only for both of these types of accounts. Now, let's say you want to use those funds for what HUD calls traditionally non-eligible uses. You will need to contact them to get prior approval before you access those funds. I want to encourage you to read both of these documents in their entirety. They are, of course, up on our website and available for download at navigatehousing.com. And as always, if you have questions, you can reach out to Vicki Bell 
She um, will answer your questions. Her email address is vbell at navigatehousing.com. That's vbell at navigatehousing.com. And she says we're going to go over a few more of the items in these documents in our next Tuesday tip. So you don't want to miss that. You also don't want to miss our next live Tuesday tip. It's scheduled for April 27th. And Vicki is going to be continuing her MOR prep series. So please register today. You can click the link in the right, the upper right hand corner of your screen right now. It will take you to the page where you can register. We hope to see you next week. We hope to see you on April 27th. We're going to have a great discussion and uh, hope you have a great rest of this week. So take care.